cool. And I appreciate. Um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate everybody. And I'm sorry I haven't uh, followed up on anything really from last time around, but it's really nice to have um, a good group here and also Saeed making it back uh, as well. So I think, and I hey, you brought up that, I think a really interesting question. It would be good to add to the, we talked about um, uh, in the in the Slack about added, talking a little bit more about the types of universities that were the R1 question. Um, so I, I mean, did you, I noticed in uh, the the Slack channel that we were, that it seemed like there was some activity on getting the new, um, uh, new OSPO, new universities kind of involved or at least reaching out. Did you want to give some kind of update? Is there any particular, like a Sarah? Yeah, I, I can, I can speak to that. So the, yeah. there were six that were funded, I think, not eight, six that were recently yeah. funded. Um, and we reached out to all of them just to kind of let them know that we have this group, you know what I mean? And they're completely welcome to join. Um, the response has been really positive. I don't know how many will join right away. I'm pretty sure they're busy <laughs> yeah. organizing their thoughts and probably getting the grant in place even in the first place, you know. Um, but uh, folks from Syracuse, folks from Stanford, uh, folks from UT, uh, I think Georgia Tech as well have all responded. Okay. Uh, really positively. So I'll just continue to keep that going, probably just through email for the time being, just kind of explaining what we're doing and what we're hoping to do in this group and then encouraging them to join. So all positive there, I think. Great. And either they, I know I probably everybody has a little bit like some interaction they've had with um, uh, with people from the group. I mean, it's Stanford and well, we're, I mean, we're obviously like uh, talking with Zach because we are really close. And um uh and then also I you think uh say got me in touch with the folks from UT um for some uh an event that's going on there. So I'll probably I'll try and uh also promote a little bit uh this activity to them when I'm when we're talking on on those other issues as well. So perfect. I suspect I have the sense that just based on where the different uh recipients are located within their universities, the the angles are a little bit different that people have with respect to the to the grants that they're receiving. So I, I don't quite know what those angles are yet either. Say so you're nodding, so maybe you you know. Yeah, well. no, you, you're absolutely right. Um, it go it it spans from individual faculty member to vice president for research. Yeah. Um, so and and I think that's deliberate. I think Sloan intentionally wanted that kind of mix. Um, you know, the one thing I'll add is. Uh, Claire and Richard Litauer and I are going to be continuing to work on University Open Sources the next year to another Sloan grant that was made um, for a coordination of these now 12 OSPOs. Um, so there's a group that we'll have a group forming around those 12 particular OSPOs plus whoever may be interested in particular topics like metrics, for example. Um, and then Rich is going to relaunch the Sustain OSS Academic Working Group as well. So both will be working together in parallel. Um, so we'll have an opportunity on those community calls and through the channels that are being set up, you know, for those 12 OSPOs to bring this up again. Um, and, may, you know, Matt, you're right. Ultimately, what will probably happen is we'll just agree that X number of the 12 will come to these calls to represent. Uh, that group, noting that, of course, you know, Stephanie and I are already here, but, you know, we might yeah. get something from, from the new batch, too. Okay. Do you know if there's uh, an intention to have, like, meetups at all, if, if I, it's part of the organizing work? Um, I think it's, well, not officially, but it definitely has been discussed in the smaller, in our original uh, uh, cohort that we've all talked, when we have, we do it anyway, and then, um, but that once the new group was coming um on that we would try and have something i mean it was I, we talked about with sloan and it was we didn't have but we didn't have anything concrete yet i was actually just okay. um thinking because we have our um and i actually wanted to add this to an agenda item at some point uh if we have time but it, it can also get pushed to the next uh discussion but because we have our um open source symposium coming up in september and I, even uh, maybe some discussion about that could be added to, or about what we're doing. Well, Seed and I talked about that, maybe having this some discussion about a panel on what we're doing at that event. Um, but we we didn't we just yeah, that was a possibility type of thing. And then um, 
but it might be interesting because uh, we it's a hybrid event so people could like and there's one day that's fully remote so that might be a good day to actually have something where we're bringing in the larger group um so i'm just uh, throwing that out there as an idea and that might actually be one way of integrating some of the work we're doing here and also getting those uh, new folks in to hear about it um in yeah. a little bit less informal way too so I mean, um, but I I'm just, I'll just throw that in. We can talk that a little bit more later, but, um, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I, when I think of order of operations, I think having that group sort of drive the agenda in this group would, would be optimal because I think chaos, we have a institutionalized at this point, understanding of how to measure things and define the measurements of things and recognizing that the university use case is our are different. They represent different perspectives than corporatized or scientific open source software. I, I, I think this group really will rely on the, the participants who, who are part of that grant landscape to, to define what it is we do here. And um, to the extent that we could get them to, to help do that or to do that um, and let them know that, that that opportunity exists essentially to codify and you know help to systematically codify both in definition and software some of the things that they want to measure uh i think that i don't know in my dream world that's kind of how this works yeah sean that makes a lot of sense um i i i there are several slack messages from claire that i haven't responded to yet um uh, she's she's already reaching out to the new ospo uh awardees and is looking at setting up this monthly community call for these 12 hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Matt, you're right that I'm sure they're sort of, you know, drinking from the fire hose right now. But, you, you know, what, what one of the things, and I, you know, I don't mean to speak for Claire, she's right here, she can speak for herself. But one of the things that she's, she's, you know, doing or hoping to get is by interviewing each of them immediately and reaching out to the, the, the original six or whatever you want to call them. Um, at our first the call, one of the, the OG, you know, yes, <laughs> the OG. <laughs> one, one, one of the things we're going to do on, you know, one of our first calls is here are all the things that, you know, you've said you're going to do, uh, in your proposal, or you say is an interest or is activity that's happening now, like this one, um, you know, who wants to go into which area and how do we you know, organize and coordinate that? So. Claire, please jump in. Yeah, I, I was I was just going to add to that. I think you know, you know, part part of this coordination effort, um, as part of this coordination effort, I think we have to recognise that there are many groups doing various different things that are of relevance to the group of OSPOs. And um, I think you know, part of the discussion here was that there are many more people interested in measuring open source in in universities than are sit in OSPOs. So so that that is a discussion that is has a, a wide interest, whether or not you sit in an OSPO or not. Um, and so as we go through the topics that we know are of interest based on previous discussions for the last number of years with folks who are working in OSPOs in university or research institutions, um, we'll be, you know, A, there'll be far too many topics to cover in whatever it is, how many months we have left in the year, because it's just too many topics. So um, my idea would be that as we identify those priority themes, we figure out where are the best places to discuss them. And the metrics discussion lives here because, I mean, who wants, no one wants to be reinventing that wheel. So you guys <laughs> yeah. have done so much work in this area that like, you know, I don't think anyone um, who has just got their grant a, a number of weeks ago will want to solve that problem in the next few months when you're already working out here. So uh, for me, this is about identifying priority issues and linking people to the best place to work on that um, so that it's 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 um, it's most useful. So that that would be, I think, part of the goals we would have. That would be just a kind of a side conversation there. Um, and on that topic, one of, one of the things I was just saying to Saeed, uh, you know, I think I know from the various different, from the chaos slack here that there isn't necessarily um, a formal plan for a chaos meetup at the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit in Europe. But I think, but Saeed myself will be there. Um, and I know, so so I think we'd, we'd like to maybe put together a, a, a room to gather people there. It actually coincides that I've, I've kind of looked into rooms and we have a time that coincides with this call. So I'm kind of thinking it might be nice for us to actually 
use it as an opportunity to meet more people in the university ecosystem in Europe or who may be attending that event and introduce them to the chaos work as well. So that might be a, a great opportunity. So it won't necessarily be a formal chaos meetup, but but yeah. well, I mean, everyone will be <laughs> invited to, to that, but it will be focused on that university, getting together those university folks there as well. So um, Dawn, I don't know if you're coming along. I know you, you often come to the Europe one, so we yeah, can yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll I'll be, be in Bilbao. I will, I will be there. I would love it if you lived me into this. In, yeah, is so it, that town, Babel? Say again? Did you say Babel? Bilbao. 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 Oh, okay. Bilbao. Yeah. Bilbao. Okay. All right. I tried to, I, I, don't, I don't know how you say it when it's Spanish. I don't know how you say it either. Right. <laughs> I thought it was in Barcelona. So. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so I think that would be a really great opportunity to let people know and, and just to meet people personally who might be, again, new people to that, to, that could participate here. That's a great, that's great. This sounds really great. And thanks for that kind of overview. Um, one thing that would be really helpful for me, Claire, is you're doing these interviews or you're like talking to the OSPOs, the new ones or the, the original ones. Um, I'd love to get a sense of kind of what are the areas that you all are working on, metrics being one of them. Like, I, I, I don't fully see that landscape in my mind. I think I have some idea, um, but I'd love to to see that even if they were just like boxes with names in them. So I kind of understood like what the different working groups were or whatever you whatever you're calling them. Yeah, happy happy to share that. So with the, at the at the moment we are going through the goals and kind of mapping them into a table to yeah. say here are people here are the common here are the common areas of focus here are where people are trying something different. Where will the work, where, where are people putting their effort in? So we're mapping that. So we haven't even got to putting names and boxes. Yeah. Yet. We're kind yeah, of but like, I would love to see that. Did That'd you rethink cool. that since you wrote your original objectives? <laughs> <laughs> no, everything is completely on track. We haven't changed yeah. a thing. Are you doing are you doing the original six as well? Yes, yeah. I am yeah, we're doing all I'm using the case studies for that, um, uh, Stephanie, but we'll be we'll be double checking again in case it's changed since cool. this last <laughs> So we're completely consistent in what we wrote. Yeah, I, think, I think Richard is still uh, on vacation, but as soon as he's back, um, we'll talk to him about the first meeting in September of the Sustain OSS Academic Re Working Group. Yeah. Um, given that he's been on a long vacation, I hope he will appreciate that maybe what we do is say, hey, Claire's done these interviews. How about we talk about that at first? <laughs> say the OSS meeting because there may, may be others in the broader community who could contribute or who are interested and so on. So, um, you know, you know, if, if folks here can join that, that meeting, that would I, be great. I will. Yeah, yeah. I think that's been in yeah. the, has that been in the sustained threads? I think I've been seeing that. Yeah, we haven't set the date and time yet, but as soon as we do, we'll, okay. we'll put it in okay. there. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Great. Yeah, hi. I just want to add that um, since Richard has been on vacation, I've been helping out to like do the research on universities and OSPO. And I've also been like filling in with Claire as well. Hi, Victory. Hi. Hi, Victory. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself when I no, got no, absolutely. I've already started. And and there's a Slack message from Victory. I haven't responded to it either. So I'll be receiving <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, hopefully. Great. All right, that sounds really cool. Um, uh, I, yeah, I'll reach out. Actually, Claire had a couple of th thoughts too, but I can reach out separately on that too on uh, on some of the case studies that you're here and the, the this is some of the work I know that y'all y'all are doing through sustain. So, um, all right. Did, uh, I I see a little note in the agenda as well about um, uh, the reminder about the survey, which I haven't done yet either. So sorry. <laughs> so. Um, did you, was there any other points about this that we want to talk about here or? No, I think it's, I think it's just a reminder. So right. we're, we're trying really hard to understand the challenges that people have, particularly with using the software and, and the metrics as we build out the data science initiative. So the idea is to use the results from the survey to, you know, figure out, uh, what I should focus on and what we should be focusing on from a data science perspective across the chaos project. So I just really want more, more voices in there, more, more opinions. It is maybe a two to three minute survey, five minutes if you get super wordy in the um, describe the challenges section. So it's, it's this, really. This is the university ASPO group. So 
Okay, <laughs> five, five to 10 minutes and get as wordy as you want. I would love that. All right, and then we can say, and you, who do you want, who is your, I mean, who would be your target on this? Would it be just those of us that are dealing with university ospos? No, the target audience is actually people who've um, used chaos software in mm. the past or yeah. currently. And um, people who've who've used our metrics maybe with other software that wasn't chaos software. Okay, cool. I can I think I can bump this to a few folks too. So that would be great. Yeah, if you can share it, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Great. Um. Also, um, I I yeah, I was gonna say. So um, the other question was, and that that so you brought up, which I think was a actually really interesting discussion we haven't brought up was that what the focus of our what the question that's in here about the r1 versus other universities um so do you want to talk to what you know your thoughts on that yeah i i so apologies for not being at the sessions live but i did look at the recordings um and i i think it's great it, it's fantastic um work and it's a really great direction so i just want to be clear about that um the observation i had is that it, it felt to me like the conversations at least given my experience, reflected sort of the R1 university view of things, the importance of research, the importance of grant funding, and so on. Um, and it was actually an exchange with Stephen Jacobs at RIT some time ago that grounded me, I guess, uh, where he said, you know, I'm a professor of practice, right? There are lots of people at RIT who are professors of practice, and if we bring in grant funding, that's great, but we're not expected to, right? Um, so the different kinds of roles that might exist at other Types of universities, the other, you know, important factors. I'm, I'm not obviously research is important at any university. I'm not saying it isn't, but if the framework doesn't address those other kinds of dimension, then I think we may, you know, sort of lose some of the other types of institutions. No, but I, that's I, why that's why I thought you know having Mike here um, would, would be handy. Um, for example. No, I definitely think that's a good. Uh, good point. Do you anybody else want to comment on thoughts on that with regards to? Because I have my own like. And Matt, maybe maybe you can bring up the framework. If, if, yep. If you know for sure. Yep. You give me just a second here. Um. So just as a, this was actually on the agenda too, so we can just kind of merge these two things here. So um, we've been talking through uh, different ways to ultimately think about metrics and how they could uh, help different activities within the university open source setting. So at the, the metrics really don't come from this initial picture. They come from our deeper thinking about how we kind of reveal these boxes down below. So the top level research excellence, translation, education, and community are kind of where we're settling on the, the top areas. Um, and the intention of this framework is just to help uh, kind of articulate conversation around how we think about activities that could be informed by metrics. Um, I think Saeed, this also connects with your conversation earlier with Helios and how we might be able to think about metrics, not just for metrics sake, but how particular metrics could help different activities in the university. And so from what I understand you're talking about at the moment, Saeed is kind of ensuring that these columns are uh, necessarily important for any, any university, no matter um, their type of classification. I see you're using a different classification that I had put in the minutes, but um, all good. Yeah, and, and they may be fine. I just think it's important to vet them, you know, with representatives from a wide range of universities. Yeah. Um, I, so I am, a, oh, go ahead, Mike. Yes. Oh, yeah, Mike. sorry. Um, so we've been, one, one of the things that we've been working on at RIT, which has been like pulling teeth, uh, has been trying to get access to um, various sort of tenure and promotion evaluation policies within all of our different uh, uh, colleges and the deans uh, seem that they will fight to the death to it. But um, <laughs> and deans with, fighting? What? Yeah, I know. 
Uh, but one thing that we found is, for instance, you know, Steve is a professor of practice and his department is quite, um, has, has a lot of faculty that kind of come from this background and they, they utilize Boyer's model, model of scholarship, which I think like maybe when I looked at this, I saw a lot of overlap. Maybe it's just cause they both have sort of four things, but, um, they use Boyer's model of scholarship to, uh, evaluate various sorts of uh, research, scholarship, uh, that sort of thing. And when we think about the work that we do, we're oftentimes thinking about it through the lens of like how we're assisting faculty. So we, we're drawing a lot from tenure and promotion um, evaluation and kind of how people think about that. I don't know if that might be useful for, for this sort of um, discussion here, but I thought I would throw it in there. Yeah, Monica, I'll, I'll, sorry. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Stephanie. No, I, was say, I do like that that idea of uh, just a, a quick inside there is that what you said, about if we're looking at other universities, maybe looking at how they judge their faculty may be a good way of considering what our boxes, all of our boxes should look like. So if, that was, I, I like that point it was very, uh, I think, um, useful. See what you say. Yeah, so Matt had mentioned Helios. Um, I actually had a call with uh, Caitlin Carter from Helios earlier, um, sorry, last week, and mentioned this again, that, that this group is looking at university uh, open source metrics. And she reminded me that one of the working groups in Helios is looking at exactly that, um, promotion and tenure policies and practices, and how to infuse more open science types of um, measures and metrics into that. Uh, it's a group led by Chris Borg, who's the Dean of Libraries at MIT, really very capable, exceptional <laughs> individual. So I'm sure they've done some very good work. And th the advantage, I guess, of the Helios is it's, it's something like 100 members now, um, 100 universities, and it, and it does really have a pretty diverse span in terms of the types of universities. So one thing we will want to check, think about is when do we have a check-in with Helios? And, and maybe this is a moment where we, we do that. And in essence, sort of say, hey, we got this initial kind of framework. Um, before we go too deep with this, we want to check in with your promotion and tenure group and just find out how does it resonate or not with how some of those conversations are going. So if we think that's helpful, I'm happy to, to suggest to Caitlin. I said that you know this group was meeting in next week or, or this week. Uh, and she said, great, just let me know. So if we think that would be helpful, I'm happy to go back to her and ask about that. Mm -hmm. My first reaction is I think it would be helpful. Okay. I don't know what others think. I think it'd be good because then you don't want to be, it, it'd be good to be building upon what e the others, each side is doing, that it's not um, like conflicting at all. So, bunch of stovepipes, like yeah. colleges on a campus. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it'd be interesting to see if they how much they're taking in this discussion about uh, different um, different types of universities and different different academic institutions, the R ones versus R twos, and how that's that's playing into their discussions as well. Because I if I remember for the Helios list, it's a lot of R ones if I recall correct, but there are it's a mixture, correct? I have to I don't have to look yeah. Th there's there's definitely a couple that in there that are not R ones. Certainly yeah. RIT. I, I don't know if right. they're. They're in a different class, perhaps, but they're definitely yeah. not our one. Yeah, we yeah. definitely are not. Yeah, and there's the, the, <laughs> and the, there's, there's nothing the, wrong with that. Yeah, the, I was going to say <laughs> yeah, <there's that. laughs> you, you don't you don't necessarily say that in a bad way, right? Uh, yeah. So um, there's there's a few minority serving institutions in that yeah. list too. Yeah, right. So get, getting that that perspective, I think, would be really important. But that's actually one of the things when you brought this issue up that it really resonated with me as a discussion point because I think that what we're if we are focused, if it does come off as being very R1 focused, it means we're also excluding a good chunk of the like HBCUs and and other groups. Uh, and it, even within our context at, at, in California, like, you know, one of our ideas is, although we're not, it's not near nearly ripe, but is the discussion with the CSUs versus, uh, which are typically only, which are most of which are R2s. Um, so it's that discussion as well where, you know, maybe we have the UCs all as R1, so they all kind of say on the same wavelength and, and but, you know, all a lot of our partner organizations, uh, other parts of California, we need to really be 
focusing on their needs as well. So I think one thing I'd love to see, like, you know, I think it's, it's great to use um, some of these various frameworks for evaluating scholarship, but I think it's hard to truly be inclusive unless we know how these different types of university are universities are evaluating their faculty, mm -hmm. right? I mean, one one dream I have is just like a a giant GitHub full of every single like tenure and promotion policy uh, at like every college and department, right? You could do like some I don't know. Uh, you know, class, like text analysis or something. But um, maybe like when thinking about engaging with Helios, I know they've been very, uh, how do you say, like soft touch so far in the commitments that the universities have uh, to given, but given that they have such a huge amount, if they're interested in asking for things, maybe transparency in this sort of work to help uh, generate and define best practices across the industry would be a, a good place to start. I don't know what everyone else thinks about that. Yeah, I, I think I, I don't want to speak for this working group. I'm, I'm not involved with it. Um, but my sense is, so Mike, I think that's a really admirable goal. Um, it, it assumes that universities care about transparency. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have been muted when I started laughing that hard. Uh, well, I, I, this is being recorded, so maybe I should have said that. Um, but, you know, I think um, what this group has done is basically at least a subset of universities have, in whatever way, shared their promotion and tenure policies, right? And they have synthesized it, um, and they're making recommendations, right? So it's not just what's the state of the art in terms of promotion and tenure. Uh, it's, it's how do we influence this to make open science more of a priority? So I think um, you're right. Helios is sort of a, you know, volunteer coalition of the willing. But I think if we can say, we're not expecting you to do the heavy lift of further developing this framework. We just want you to give us a reality check and then we can continue to do the work and keep coming back at whatever interval makes sense. I think they'd be receptive to that. Um, so um, yeah, unless, unless somebody thinks it's a really bad idea, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll get back to Caitlin and say, can, can we just meet briefly with, you know, the um, promotion and tenure group and share this framework, the initial framework with you for feedback. Um, but I think Claire makes a really good point about not just Europe, but the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to address that, but I do think that's important. <laughs> I mean, Europe's tenure and promotion policies I would characterize as more humane and recognizing scholarship as well as money. Hmm. It's my opinion. So I have a few comments, one or maybe three. Um, would, it, would it be possible to get documents from Helios with respect to the work they've been doing? That's that transparency question. Do they have like minutes that they would be willing to share? Or anything like that. Uh, I can I can ask. There are there are some okay. reports on their on their website, but I can ask that question too. Okay, just because kind of the not asking them to do the heavy lift. If there's things that we could go through as well that they've already documented, that might help. That's um, a good point. That reality that check as well. Um, uh, with respect to to RPT, like we don't in this model we don't really have like a component that is specifically RPT. This whole thing is kind of RPT. And um, I think we've had this discussion before, like is this framework for um, university faculty who are going through that process? Is it for people that are helping organize open source activities? For example, an individual that would sit in an OSPO um, and this conversation shakes that balance a little bit for me. I'm not sure if we think about this as an RPT framework, it changes the way I look at it a little bit. So uh, I'll probably narrate it a little bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, you raise a very good question and I'll put out my opinion and feel free to shoot it down. I don't think we want a strong binding between this and a reward promotion tenure process um, for some of the reasons you just described. 
And getting an RPT process to change is a, <laughs> a massive lift. Um, I, I view the engagement. Lifetime. Yeah, I view the engagement with Helios more as just a, you know, I think Mike is a reality check, right? Mm -hmm. um, is if if these these policies and processes are changing toward more kind of open science, whatever the case may be, it's just good for us to know it um, and then think about it. So I'm not seeking like Helios to approve this or endorse it or anything like that, but just give us sort of a, a feedback from what they've been doing. Um, I think in the long arc, something like this will have more traction earlier if we don't bind it to RPT, right? Um, I think that just becomes a very, very big lift. Okay, that's helpful. So I like what you were saying. Like, if if RPT is shifting, then how can this framework from, I'll just say OSPO in this case, from an OSPO perspective, support that shift? How can we ensure that we support that shift from an OSPO? Okay, I like that. Um, that helps. And then the maybe the last comment too is if you recall, this was originally proposed, this framework was originally proposed as a maturity model with kind of this implication that you would, I suspect, kind of go down, you know, like do all the things that are in the list. And I think as long as we continue to promote it as not a maturity model, but as a university, there are any one of these boxes or things that you may choose to focus on and you don't have to focus on all of them by any means. So for example, it may only be the identification of open source in the curriculum might be the critical component or say a, a master's level regional school that's thinking about open source at their university. That might be the, the first area of focus that they would, that they would have. And that's, and maybe the only area of focus that they would have. So I think that's, to me, I think, and me also at an R2, like we don't do a lot of tech translation kind of work. Um, so that would just be a box that I would kind of set aside as probably not something that we focus on tremendously. So as long as we can promote that, you know, continue to message that, I think we would be okay. Yeah, I'd agree too, because I mean, I'm looking back to my point of, I, pre previous to me being at UCSC, I was at a, uh, like a basically what you're talking like a graduate school that focused on professional development like that you know was a professional graduate school and you know the, the although there was this there was some you know discussion of of research and research translation and mainly it was the education and community aspect that would have been important to us but it because a lot of what we were doing was open source analysis like those were actually super important but we weren't quite there yet we're having the discussion where I so I could see like if I could see even a school like that looking at this going oh yeah these are the boxes that I that that fit us and that would as long as it's fine that it's not everything you know that we have on here that's require any requirements which we don't have but that it's like a, a it's kind of a menu of of items to to choose from so to this that uh... Agree to this question too that you bring up, Saeed. Like, are you getting a sense that there's other universities that aren't necessarily R ones that are starting to engage in this kind of work, or is this kind of looking out into the future to a possibility that may exist? So, um, you know, I can't go into too many details for, for all the obvious reasons, but I, I spoke with a few institutions when the Sloan RFP came out. Um, you know, for the current round. And I can tell you that some of those institutions are not R1. Um, okay. So I, I, I think, you know, to the extent that uh, they'll follow through if they weren't chosen for the Sloan program is, is, is a valid question, but there was at least some interest there. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I, think I had a very similar experience during that, 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 that time as well. So. Okay, well, that's fair. Um, there's there's been a discussion that's been going on in the chat and I want to make sure that we don't miss that. I haven't been reading it. So <laughs> if anybody, Claire or Sean, Mike, if you want to bring that forward, that would be great as well. Uh, I was just saying in, in chat that, you know, not coupling this tightly with RPT, I think makes a lot of sense because then it seems like there's an agenda and there's this group out there trying to change RPT. And then it becomes kind of a target where 
I think what we can do is provide ways of measuring contributions to open source software that at some point, some RPT committees are going to look at and feel more comfortable discussing because there is a number that they can look at. It's kind of just making it easier so that they're not like, oh, we don't know what this means. It's like, oh, this is what this means. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's not that we're telling them to do it. It's like, hey, look, this isn't as hard as you think it is. Type. Well, it's hard, but it's, it gives them a starting point at least. Yeah. I was I was mostly agreeing with Sean as well. You know, I think um I, you know, I think it's very understandable. I guess I don't know if you want to say like the political realities of of RPT or or anything like that and trying to change that. But I do think there is um value in uh looking towards, you know, like when when thinking about the work that we're doing here, looking towards, you know, in in concretely thinking about how we value the work uh, faculty and researchers, uh, the what they put into creating things like open science artifacts. Um, and, and like having an eye on that, even if we aren't explicitly bound, because I think it'd be very easy to kind of, I don't know, in a way get off track and think about like, you know, uh, I don't know, get into like a sort of checkbox mode of thinking where it's like our institution has a um, enterprise github subscription and so we get like silver level or whatever um so yeah i don't know if that made things more vague or confusing but yeah no, kind of this is good well, i appreciate the conversation i i mike i think your last point in particular one thing i did hear very loud and clear from helios um or i should say the helios coordination leadership um is avoiding like the equivalent of impact factor that we have for articles with software, right? That, that, that is just something they were like, if you're going down the path of counting and coming up with impact based on that, we're not interested. <laughs> that that I heard loud and clear. So um, I think it's really important to keep that in mind. So I'll, I'll just add my, my, my um, thing in the chat was, uh, was just to give context about the National Open Research um, Action Plan that's in Ireland, which is, uh, I suppose it's been funded, the whole plan has been backed by the government, by the ministers, it's been funded by the government because of an EU an, um, open research trend. And so they have to actually put together an action plan and they explicitly talk about career progression and, and to have, you know, demonstrable means that the Irish research community are all now within their career progression using open research as a factor and stuff like that. I just quoted some of the stuff from it there. I suppose my my thought there was that, and I think it may be similar to some some of the stuff that Mike was saying. And um, I I I definitely want you know it would be very helpful for for us to be able to come up with some metrics that would automatically feed in and fit with, however they're they're currently measuring that for the other elements of open research, and um, so that for all the European countries who may be implementing similar plans that we could kind of serve up a kind of a this is a really great way for you to measure your progress against. Uh, what are they saying? Uh, research recognition rewards to, towards responsible research and open research metrics and practices, right? So like, so we, you know, right now in the Irish plan, there's nothing in there around open source in relation to that. Uh, we're trying to get that put in there, but but if we could serve them up something to say, you should really include this as an action point, then number one, it would help move the needle. Um, but number two, there's also funding available for supporting the infrastructure required for some of this stuff. So there might be opportunities for, um, for more input into both, like measuring this in the future, for example. Is this the document that you put in the chat? Is this where you got that quote? Okay. I will definitely take a look at this. Okay, cool. Um, thank you for that. And say to your point of the avoiding impact factor, like we in the, chaos project for a long time have known that we have a reach that we can go to where we say good or bad and we typically don't go there <laughs> like ever and so really all of our focus is to provide information the metrics provide information that you as a consumer of that can contextualize for you and your university 
whatever type of university it is within your RPT process, whatever your process might be. Um, but we can just help get that information more present for you. But then there is work that needs to to contextualize that. So okay. rest that's assured, cool. Leo, is that we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's very helpful to hear. I'll I'll be sure to convey that too. Okay, right on. Um, well, we, we only have five minutes left. This is a really great conversation. Um, I, I just wanted to put in front of people, I've been continuing to work on this framework. I had just like wordsmithing just a little bit um, and trying to think of uh, how this is best presented. You're, I'm not going to walk through everything I did. I just wanted to point out that right now, every one of the boxes, whether it's right or wrong, is at least starting to have a series of questions around it to think about the goal. I am having a very hard time coming up with questions for this one. Yeah. So improving research reproducibility and replicability. And I know this is important, you know, kind of in, in Stephanie's situation. So I, I don't know what we would ask here. Let so, me go through, I mean, we don't have a ton of time. I, I'm happy to actually take this on a, a bit more. And also, since Carlos is my is kind of my the person I go to for all of these type of questions, I can have him give me some starting points for this. And can so, you just like type those in here. Yeah, that would be super. Yeah, and then helpful. I'll just type. Yeah, I'll just like, I'll just do it that way. Free flow type. Yeah. I just yeah yeah. And then and then we can we can go through over them next next time around too. So yeah, and if okay. I was going to say if there's any other sections that 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 might be useful for us to be doing that over the next two weeks that might be just helpful to, to start a discussion for discussions to start i mean there's something that we can do that on like the group can do um with regards to all of the the, the boxes that you have so far i mean i think that would that would be if that seems helpful i mean i'm, I'm happy to take on some of it too so okay great yeah me too um, and yeah, Stephanie, I think the session that we had at the ACM conference would be really useful for this particular yeah. slide, right? Yeah, yeah, and definitely there probably, there's little questions little. in that already, I think. Um, so that's a good point. Yeah, even just like two or three, I'm having a hard yeah, time yeah, like yeah. just loading no, totally. myself. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah. totally. And it's like I said, it's like something that it, I think, you know, yeah, I think there'd be something relatively simple for, for Carlos and I to just, just sit down and, and write, write a few up for you. And for everybody to okay. discuss next time. I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, then the other, just if you want to take a look at any of the other slides and the questions that have kind of been worked out there, again, feel free to add or um, remove. And then I've been, for a while, I was kind of balancing between like open source software, open data, open standards. I, I'm trying to just collapse this all into one thing at this point. So I'm just calling it open source, and I do have on the slides that this includes open source software, open source standards, and open data. It it was it got too wide if I tried to address all three in a different set of questions. So I just I did collapse it. Okay. So when it does say open source, like for example, say if you're talking to Helios and like, well, we don't care just about open source software. You're like, well, it, it's meant to capture all things open, and maybe we can say that a little better here. But nonetheless, that's what. That's what that is. Okay. All right. No All right. Thing. Right on. Uh, well, everybody, that was great. Pretty good. Yeah. Thank All you, right. everybody. Thanks, everyone. Cool. All right, cool. Thank yeah, you. thanks, everybody. Until, right. until two weeks. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.